and welcome to This Week in Agriculture. I'm Esther Gishuki, and joining me is Dan Miano from the Kenya Chamber of Commerce. Karibu sana, Dan. Thank you. You can start, introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Dan Miano, uh, CEO of Chamber of Commerce uh, Kiambu Chapter, and uh, also the agriculture project that we are doing uh, with the uh, 15 organization. I chair that project. Okay, then Dan, I think you'll really like our first story because it touches on avocado training. Uh, farmers in Kiambu County have concluded a one-week training on how to grow avocados for export in respect to the expected boom after Kenya and China got into a trade agreement for the supply of avocados. Upon completion of the training, the farmers were awarded with certificates, which is a requirement by the Global Good Agricultural Practices GAP certification. Jacqueline Kemunto reports. The Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry entered into a contract with a consortium of institutions to produce, finance and market avocado products from farmers it has engaged for this project. Kiambu Branch Chief Executive Officer Daniel Miano said there exists a large international market for high quality avocado products that is impossible to satisfy with the current avocado production in Kenya. Miano said that the farmers before they planted, they had to undergo training first as there were requirements to be met and also sign a contract with the buyer. During the seminar, farmers were trained on the best agricultural practices for avocado production, where Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, in conjunction with ZTEC University, was to give technical and research services, while Equity Bank would give financial support by offering loans to farmers. KEFIS would give quality seed advice, while several other institutions were to seek certification of individual avocado farms that have been registered with this agreement. The government is trying to provide an enabling environment so that uh, everyone does not say that I am running an, a nursery that has no license because there was nobody to inspect. Uh, so there are some set of requirements, uh, and uh, one of them is that you must have some knowledge on what you are doing, how to raise a seedling, how to graft, how to tell this is fuete and this is hearth or uh, another variety, so that we call it true to type. Uh, because uh, we wouldn't want farmers to plant a tree today, wait for three years and they are waiting for hearth and it produces uh, kienyeji. So we train farmers, even farmers and all the nursery operators on how to get true to type or to even identify uh, true hearth uh, or true fuete. And there are all sorts of characteristics like the smell. I'm sure you people don't know that some smells of the leaves, the, the leaves of hearth and fuete, they smell differently. And those are some of the small basic things, even the, the way the leaves appear. Small, small things that you can actually tell this is your fuete or this is your hearth. According to More Farm Company Limited, a horticultural farm who has agreed to buy the avocados from the farmers directly, they will provide officers to the farmers to show them how to plant, apply fertilizers for the three years, and also will help farmers in harvesting. We are never even to surprise, to meet the demand. And even at times we are forced to export the local avocado, the ungrafted one. With that regard, we are very happy and we appreciate the consortium and the governor of Kiambu. We, for the consortium which has been formed, that we, and I know within the next three years we'll be able to work together as a team and we'll meet the goals. To mention, Mofam is an exporter who is known countrywide and also outside the country in those uh, markets. And the other day we got a award from Avocado Society of Kenya through EPC, the best in the medium category. We got a trophy to that effect. To mention also, recently, on 31st, I was in Nyeri County. We had a start, and we talked to the governor, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Ministry of Agriculture, Nyeri County Gov Governor, about 
this project of avocado. So I'm very sure we are, we'll go places in the country and we are going to elevate farmers to another new level. Kenya earned 78 billion Kenya shillings last year out of exporting avocado. Kenya also imports avocados from Rwanda to meet the local export. Reporting for Farmers TV, I'm Jacqueline Kemunto. Dan, what is your take on that story? Yeah, as, as, as Chamber of Commerce, uh, what we are doing is that uh, we brought uh, together 15 stakeholders to help in training farmers and we want now to turn farmers uh, just from being normal farmers to become, uh, uh, we are calling it ag uh, agripreneurs. And uh, we want to change uh, the mentality of that uh, farmers can only be done um, uh, by people who, who are doing it like more of a hobby, but to change their mentality for it to be a business. And uh, we are focusing on, uh, focusing on the Hass Avocado, whereby uh, we've uh, brought in uh, exporters. And uh, last year we were in China uh, to just uh, certify that uh, the market is there. And uh, for sure we were assured uh, the quantity we were being asked for is uh, like in one city was uh, in Foshan we've been asked for 20 tons per week. So when we came back um, I wanted to know are we capable to do this and how again do we support our small scale farmers because uh, at the moment uh, most uh, of the ex exporters are the, 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 the big uh, scale farmers but also we need to bring the small scale farmers uh, up, up, up uh, so that at least they can be able to to join the export market. So the, the export market has some conditions uh, uh, from the SSP's protocol that was signed. Mm -hmm. You can elaborate some of those conditions? Yes, uh, for, for example, uh, we need uh, the global gas certification for people who are exporting uh, in Europe and uh, China, uh, that being uh, the larger Asia. And uh, so, uh, most farmers are not aware of this, and uh, especially for somebody who wants to go commercial, uh, in terms of uh, farming the, the, uh, of the Hass avocado, uh, they need the, uh, at least the global gap certification. And um, also we are training uh, uh, from um, a seedling production up to the end of the product, uh, the full value chain. So we brought in uh, uh, 15 organizations with each organization mandated to take care of uh, a different aspect uh, that is required for the export market. Uh, for example, uh, we brought in KEFIS to help uh, with vital sanitary, uh, global gap uh, uh, certification training with the auditors come uh, from Europe again uh, to come and audit the farms. Uh, we brought in uh, MoFarm and uh, Delphi Kenya to assist uh, with uh, global, back, uh, global gap training. Then we brought in uh, JQUOT to train uh, in agronomy, uh, in uh, horticultural. So uh, they came up with a training module which farmers are taken through. Then we brought in uh, ZTEC University to train on ent entrepreneurship and also use their resource center uh, for, for IT. Uh, we brought in uh, uh, Horticultural Crops Directorate, again they are mandated in terms of export and also certification of the nurseries and all that. Uh, we brought a, a youth group, uh, actually we are doing pilot in Kiambu before we go to 31 counties. Uh, Dan, when people think about this training um, and the fact that it is helping farmers, small-scale farmers, uh, to become more, to get into the commercial Haas avocado market, mm -hmm. when many farmers think of that, you think that maybe I need three acres, maybe I need five acres, what, what is the limit? Uh, our requirements is at least half an acre and above. A half an acre will take uh, between 70 to 75 uh, uh, trees. Um, uh, to, we do not have a maximum, whatever number you want, but at least for it to be commercial viable, at least you need to do half an acre uh, uh, plus. Mm -hmm. And how many farmers are you targeting? Uh, the project is for three years. We are targeting 8,000 farmers in the, the 31 counties that we've mapped that uh, can, uh, can uh, do avocado production. And actually even the title of the project is uh, Avocado Production and Marketing for Small Scale Farmers. And um, we are targeting uh, farmers with the requirement of half an acre and also the other requirement is uh, accessibility to water. Uh, that's why even we have training, during the training we have Elgon Kenya training on uh, irrigation because we do not want again with the climate change, we do not want again farmers to rely on the rain, you must be able to irrigate your farm. Yeah, so uh, we are targeting 8,000 farmers in um, 31 counties. Yeah, and at least we're looking at, uh, if each farmer can have an acre, so we're looking at uh, 8,000 acres.
And what is the process of selection for the farmers? What do they need to have beforehand, as, except from the access to water and also more than half an acre? Uh, what we do is um, uh, once, for example, what we are doing with the pilot program is uh, we select a sub-county. For example, uh, we are doing pilot in Kiambu for three months before we do the main launch. The pilot program was launched by Peter Biwot, uh, CEO Export Promotional Council, who are part of the consortium. And uh, we first uh, uh, work with the sub-county officers to identify groups, uh, farmers groups, cooperatives, individual farmers who are interested in the project. And uh, we do sensitization about the project. Uh, the training takes five days. The first certification is done, what you're required to do. And then from there, we, once we get the interested farmers, you now we, we put them in the project. They undergo the first training. And actually, after the training and the first certification is done, they sign contracts with the doctor that we are assuring them that we will be buying their fruits uh, at the end of production to just avoid uh, many of these projects which have come up and people are just uh, trained. Uh, so how we are selecting the farmers is we are doing uh, sensitization uh, uh, per sub-county. Uh, we get two or three sub-counties together. For example, in the pilots we've done so far, we've done Kiambu and Gidongori farmers, and we sensitize maybe 100 farmers. Then from the farmers we are putting cohorts of 20 farmers in groups. We train them now uh, through the class practicals and all that. And uh, in the consortium, again, as I mentioned, each organization in the 15 consortium that I mentioned, uh, the 15 organization, they send somebody to train on a specific topic. So it's, a, it's something which is very holistic. Do the farmers pay for the training? Yes, the farmers are paying for the training. Uh, at the moment, uh, for the pilot project, uh, the farmers are paying for 15,000 for the five days. These again include uh, the venues, the meals, where because we are taking it to the nearest. If we, for example, it's Kiambu in Gidongomi, we do it in Kiambu. Uh, the next one in September, we are doing Kikuyu, Limuru, Kabete. We will be doing it uh, around Kikuyu. So it's paid for the venue. And also, apart from signing contracts with these farmers, uh, Equity Bank has brought in agronomists, that's one of them, who will be visiting farmers. And also in the consortium, we've uh, brought uh, also an agronomist to run the project and quarter visits to the farm individually will be done. So before even all the certifications are done from Global Gap, uh, we'll also have CAFIS there, we'll have HCD uh, doing their certification. So we, we are not just training farmers and in contracts and leaving them. We will be quarterly, quarterly meeting, so that the 15,000 is inclusive of all, all that. Thank you for your insights, Dan. Let's move on to the next story. The 15th African Dairy Conference and Exhibition took place at the KICC from 14th to 16th of August 2019. The event was organized by the Eastern and Southern Africa Dairy Association, which saw more than 30 countries around the globe. Attending the event, more than 3,000 visitors and 150 exhibitors were also present. The association was formed in 2004 with its main agenda being able to improve the dairy sector with new technology being embraced and being at the top notch. The three-day event created a platform for various stakeholders in the dairy sector to showcase their products. It was also a major platform for networking and better understanding of the dairy sector in Africa. Our reporter Valentine Atino attended the three-day event and filed the following report. The dairy sector has proved to be one of the fastest growing sectors in the East Africa regions with new innovations being invented as evidenced by the event organized by the Eastern and Southern Africa Dairy Association. Various farmers and stakeholders who attended the conference expressed their views on the importance of this event to them. They also had a say on the reception of the new technology by various visitors. <laughs> Mesoma mambo mengi sana. Kuhusu vile ngombe anapatiwa chakula. Minerals. Uh, milk production. Yoyote tumesoma. Hata vile unaweza kutoa masiwa mzuri. Nili nilipoingia nili hapa nimesoma mambo mengi. Na najua e, me, mengi nitakwenda kufanya practice. Nione kama nita improve. Sana sana, ni vile mi nita kueda kujitengenezea chakula changu cha ngombe. E, kama kueka silage, kutengeneza he angu. Unasingine kama vile naweza kupanda rusan, na vitu kama hizi. You know what is important is to improve what we are doing. Yeah. Expected to see 
more of this stuff in the show. I would have expected farmers also to be able to come and tap from the rich knowledge and experiences that I see from different exhibitors in this event. But generally speaking for us, it was a high key event for us and uh, we've been able to do business from this show. The event was generally a platform to encourage other farmers to embrace new technology of dairy farming with the main aim of improving the dairy sector and enhancing network. Kwanza kama leo nimesoma mahani kwamba hao ngombe kama mwenye tuko naye nyumbani anatoa maziwa lita moja lakini leo nimepata kujua kuna product yenye naweza mpa and then anaongeza maziwa inafika mpaka lita 5 lita 10 kuna kitu kingine pia nimelearn pale is of uh, the benefits of chia seeds benefits of pumpkins vile tunapika pumpkin tukitupa hizo mbegu nimejua nimepata kujua kwamba pia ni dawa na zinaweza tumika in other ways many farmers across the globe were able to embrace their products and they managed to sell most of their products in fact some farmers opted to start some of the businesses. Wata asile ya upeki yake kutoka juzi, wakulima wamekuwa na shangwe, wamechukua manamba zetu, wanataka kufanya na hivi na hivi, wamejua umuimu. Pia kuna mkulima pia asha chukua ya majani ya kapelekea ngombe. Na jana hamekuja, haka tuambia, ah, kweli sisi ndoyo, tunajitupa, asa maenda kupandamiwa kwa ki. For Farmers TV, I'm Valentine Atieno. What are your thoughts on that story, Dan? Yeah, um, number one, uh, formation of these associations uh, has become very important. And uh, uh, like in Kenya, for example, the dairy cooperatives, all farmers in the dairy cooperative have been enhanced in terms of training, uh, uh, production, and uh, they are doing quite well. I can give examples like uh, uh, from uh, Kiambu, where we have uh, dairy cooperatives, which are doing very well. And uh, if if these cooperatives are formed and associations come together just to support the farmer and the new technology that is coming up, then uh, I think with the milk production, uh, if it's beef or the whole holistic of livestock, then that will be a, a very good thing. And just to add on that is uh, I'm aware there is a, a council that is being formed. The, the way we have Kenya Horticultural Council, Kenya Flowers Council, there is a council that has been formed uh, on livestock. So again, just to propagate that from the national level. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we have seen a lot of trainings happening when it comes to the dairy sector, not only in here, here in KCC, Nairobi County, but also in Wasin Gishu County, across other counties. But we have also seen a decline when it comes to milk production and also the profitability. Do you think that maybe these trainings are the way to go, considering that the dairy productivity is going down? Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's why it's important uh, for, for, for these associations to work with, with, with other stakeholders because the, the challenge you might find is, for example, the, all the culture of, of doing dairy farming, uh, napier grass and all that, these days they are way better way to, to do the, the production, to increase the milk production, they are better way of fodder, how to make the fodder. And more they technologies. Mixing, they are the new technology, uh, even simple things like even how do you milk you find the new technology, how that can be done. And then basic things like record keeping. You find most farmers that do not keep records, we do not know at what time do you feed, uh, what did you feed. And uh, so sometimes even when uh, you find a veterinary goes, uh, when a cow is sick, they cannot be able to identify secret because no records are kept. So these small things that are, are coming up and uh, with technology, then uh, we, 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 we will see a rise in the milk production yeah, eventually. That some of the resolutions that were made is that improving dairy breeds and also AI. Do you think that those are viable methods? Yes, actually they are very viable because uh, for lack of a better word, I'll say the Kienyeji way, we need now to, to upgrade from the Kienyeji way of doing things. And the AI breeding, for example, I know of a farmer uh, uh, who's doing uh, the, AI, the AI and uh, actually has uh, uh, one of the best productions in terms of uh, if it's milk and if it's beef. And uh, actually even uh, the breeds that he has, if you visit the farm, you can see the, the cows are huge, they are big. So I think that is the way to go. And uh, actually internationally, uh, br breeding is what people are doing now. Yes. Okay, thank you, Dan, for that. I'll have you read our next story on Embu Farm. Here you go. That is your camera. Okay. 
uh, Embu, Embu Farm Explores sorghum and millet value addition. Sorghum and millet have been important staple crops in the semi-arid tropics of Africa and Asia for centuries. Whilst many people only produce flour from the two crops, there is a farm in Embu County that has taken value addition of the two crops a notch higher by making snacks from the sorghum and, and palm millet. Susan Mwangi visited Kieru Farm and filed this report. Sorghum and palm millet are important traditional food crops in Africa and Southeast Asia. On a global basis, the two crops rank fifth among food cereals and contribute to the subsistence of an estimated 700 million people. While the two crops are mostly manufactured into flour, there is a group of farmers in Embu County who have taken the process of adding value to the cereals a notch higher by making snacks. Yeshangi Maina is the general manager of Kieru Company. I'm an agro-processor. We take serious snacks, healthy, yummy, healthy, serious snacks mm -hmm. from our traditional cereals, mm -hmm. that is palm millet mm -hmm. and sorghum. This is what we do here. We do sorting. Uh, dio to clean, dio to pate, ku pea watu, healthy snacks, like it will be safi. For healthy precaution measures, we were subjected to put on a dust coat to prevent germs and other substances from getting into the grains. Nimzudi, kuagaria hygiene, to see, to see, contaminate shakura, na pia sisi, to see, patwe na yo shafu ya yo shakura. Yo ni lazima, uki a grow processor, kitu ya kwanza kuagaria, kabure ya kwanza kazi, ni hygiene. Okay, that was very Thank nice. Huh? <laughs> With a few so touches cool. here and there, you'll take my job, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what are your thoughts on that story? Yeah, uh, value addition is the way to go. So, for example, the farm in Embu, uh, when, they, for example, they have the sorghum and they do value addition, that is the way to go. As I, uh, I mentioned, that uh, even in the house of avocado, uh, there are countries who are more interested not uh, eating the avocado, but uh, <coughs> the avocado oil itself. Uh, for various reasons, cosmetics, medical purposes, uh, because the avocado uh, fruit has a lot of nutrients uh, in it. And uh, rather than exporting the fruit, if somebody in the US wants uh, the avocado oil, why should we take the whole from the seed the uh, to, to, to the US? Eh? So we need to do value addition. Also in the avocado industry, actually through Mofam, uh, they are bringing in machines to be doing uh, the production of avocado oil in large scale. Yes. Which is very important, and also this story when it when it says um, about the sorghum and millet adding value to that, mm -hmm. and also from your perspective telling us about how people can even add value to avocado. Yeah. Do you think that this should be replicated in other sectors? Yes, in the whole industry, starting even coffee, tea, uh, because uh, since time immemorial, as uh, we know from our fathers that uh, they've been doing, the, 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 they, they grow the, the, the crops, like for example coffee, we export them in raw form, they are good, they are, they are manufactured and uh, their value addition is done, and we go back and buy the same thing in the supermarket. So uh, why can't we be selling uh, the coffee or tea in uh, its final product to the, to, the, to the market? Because that's again, job creation, and uh, with, the, with the agenda four, one of the things is manufacturing. So value addition, if it's sorghum, is avocado, is in all crops, actually if we are to export anything, then it should be in its final uh, stage uh, from packaging and everything to the, to the market outside there. Which brings me to my next question. Do you think the value addition will aid us in getting or rather achieving food security quicker? Yes, uh, it, 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 it will do that and uh, uh, actually also uh, increasing production mainly. Um, uh, we have the, uh, the Galana, Kulalu, uh, uh, the, the, the irrigation scheme the government is doing that will actually help uh, uh, bridge the gap in food security. And uh, from this kind of uh, promoting small scale farmers, uh, at the moment, uh, most farmers even are going to real estate, up uprooting crops and all that. But it's because they have not been seeing value for, for so many years in terms of farming. Uh, but with, with new technology coming in, if it's dairy farming, if it's uh, 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 crops, uh, be it coffee, be it, if we do the value addition and then farmers start seeing value at the end of the day and the market is good, then people will start uh, stop selling and uprooting uh, the, 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 the crops to go into real estate. Yeah. 
Thank you so much, Dan, for your insight on that. For you at home, let us know your feedback, especially on that story. Our big question today is, do you think that value addition can help in achieving Kenya's food security? Let us know on our social media platforms at Farm Kenya. We're taking a short commercial break, but we'll be back with more. <music>